welcome. So Doll Winters, um, I think if I just uh, have to familiarize myself with how the screen works, this is not advancing. Um, clicker? All right, thank you, thank you. Yep, I always have to learn new technologies pretty quickly because um, the world is adapting really fast. Um, one thing that's been really important to me over the course of my career is how do you incorporate technologies to actually serve important purposes? Um, so today I'll talk about how these two acronyms, um, the first you'll know about, the second you may not know that much about, um, can actually help propel us forward uh, in terms of academic leadership and sustainability. Not just academic, but you'll find that maybe this is applicable everywhere. So me, um, I attend Colorado State University's Systems Engineering Program. I'm a PhD student, have been there since 2020. Um, this year I was supposed to graduate uh, this spring, but I will be a little bit late, but I'm still looking forward to graduating this fall. Um, I've been a developer of open source software and hardware for um, systems um, in general, solving problems in science and sustainability for uh, several years. And I'm a member of the Open Air Collective. I want to give them a great honor today. You'll see them mentioned in several slides. Um, Alexander Osei, uh, he's on Open Air, uh, one of the students that, or former students who um, have been there for many years as well. So, yes. Oh, yes, wonderful. Okay, I was wondering about whether or not I was actually uh, coming across. Okay, is this better? Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I can hear the echo. I was like, oh, I'm standing like too, too close. Okay. All right. So background. Basically, I've been, uh, I, I would categorize myself as a knowledge and systems hacker. Uh, that's what I've uh, pretty much done for most of my time. I've been a professional problem solver for eight years. Um, after I kind of worked for, uh, for many years before that uh, and attended school many years as well, I found that it was more advantageous for me to, um, to solve problems on my own. Um, I've gone through multiple fields of expertise in science and engineering. So that um, my degree and my undergraduate degree was in biology, um, even though I wanted to pursue physics, um, studied physics for many years, and uh, um, that's really where I, I, I love physics, but um, biology, and then I did ecology for my master's, um, um, kind of did chemistry somewhere in there, so I can help with uh, um, open, uh, open Air's uh, chemical engineering um, as a mentor for some students. Uh, I've also um, engineering, you know, systems engineering now, but um, I've also studied mechanical engineering, studied uh, um, like acoustics. I've studied you know, a lot of stuff. So I just put all of this together and try to generate new technologies to solve important problems. Um, 2017, uh, I, I happened to earn, it didn't take much to earn this, but apparently um, out of 500,000 um, um, community members in the solver community at Innocentive, uh, which is now Wazoku, I was number three uh, to earn like, uh, the most, I guess, of um, from all the winnings of innovation challenges. And um, so I do that because I'm a number two. I, I try to bust silos. That's my latest term. Um, there's too many information silos in the world. I actually attended a conference uh, last last fall, the Energy and Data Conference in, in Austin, Texas. And the, the biggest thing that came up there at that conference was the fact that there are silos everywhere. Uh, so people who actually want to be more sustainable can't do that and they can't use the data that they want to use to build the systems that would actually get us there to a faster energy transition. Even though the whole room was like full of oil and gas people. Um, and I'm the only like sustainable renewable energy person that I, I'm aware of. Um, you know, I was there because um, they needed uh, some help that they weren't getting. So, um, and a student of life. So we're all students of life. We're here because we're all taking the class every day, how to live better. So I uh, skipped the outside the box. You guys will see that, um, you know, that's something that you can ponder later on. But I just wanted to go through these real quick and uh, show you that this is what our department does at, uh, at CSU. Uh, Department of Systems Engineering, uh, lo and behold, it says on their website what they do, which is actually why it's the best place for me to attend because um, it says the, the world's most complex problems. Um, on here, there's not like some of the things I'm going to talk about, which is like 
the sixth great mass extinction and climate change and stuff not going where it needs to go, which is um, Manu uh, very wonderfully highlighted. Uh, you have all these people not getting the resources that they really need. Um, so um, academic leadership, systems engineering is CSU's largest degree program uh, by um, um, enrollment. There's modeling software um, that's available as a tool to help systems engineers um, learn how to solve problems uh, more efficiently. This is also a tool that could be very useful and that I found very useful in open hardware as well, um, just enhancing how open hardware is documented and used uh, so that you can more efficiently build upon uh, the blueprints and other things that are available. Um, but I found that within um, every discipline, sometimes languages evolve differently. You have different jargon, different technical terms and such. Um, and MBSE works really great in census engineering, but then I start um, seeing other instances of other languages during my research that um, seem to fit different use cases a little bit better, but still there's, there's a lot of uh, interplay. There's places where you can borrow uh, techniques from one discipline and apply it to another. So MBSE software, um, things like uh, uh, there's Katia, which is made by uh, uh, Dassault System, or uh, actually I think Katia is, um, it, it's in that area somewhere, but there's that one. Um, there's uh, some others like, uh, um, Ashi, I've got to remember, because I've been looking at Modelio and and uh, there's open, open um, there, there's another type, but, um, but all this software, um, especially Capella, which is really awesome. I recommend that one from Eclipse. Um, these are mostly proprietary and closed source. So uh, most people don't have access to these tools to be able to improve their documentation. Uh, but you can see there's um, systems engineers do some pretty cool stuff to what people do in open hardware. My particular research was in um, uh, engineering and scaling a cement-based carbon storage system. And I say it was because uh, this past year I had a bit of a, a detour, which actually resulted in probably more education than I could have imagined um, in this actual topic. So uh, one year, uh, you can see last year uh, about this time, uh, I was doing this research and we got it published. Um, my advisor, you'll see in a moment, um, um, and also uh, uh, Kwaku, who's a very wonderful person. Um, he, he has been an um, a outstanding collaborator and uh, definitely want to honor him. Um, he works in as a cement manager and, uh, you know, one of the areas where they want to be more sustainable as well, and they can't be because you know there's not enough information getting where it needs to go about how to do that. Um, huge carbon emissions. It's like the eighth biggest country in terms of car carbon emissions if it were a country, the whole cement industry. Um, so this work, which had a lot of uh, interest, was actually inspired by open hardware work. So people like yourselves, myself, um, um, basically, you know, we um, we do open hardware and we think, well, it's not getting published. Uh, so we're not actually seeing the direct benefits of that work. Um, but in turn, your work actually inspires people like me who read the stuff and um, are able to synthesize new information based on it. And so... I uh, actually developed um, my bit of open hardware. Uh, it's called the Cyan unit. Uh, it's um, Cyan Decarbonizer now to make it more descriptive. Open Air Collective uh, was a very kind community to support that work. And I decided when I developed that to open source it or open hardware it, uh, it became Oshawa's first carbon removal device that was certified. Um, and you can see like what it does down there. <laughs> yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Oshawa. Um, it's it's been just the, the honor of actually getting um, uh, something certified and out to people. That's something that happens so rarely these days, um, just because a lot of our work just doesn't see the light of day, unfortunately, in academia. Um, that is what I'm going to talk about today: is how what we can change. Um, so I just want to point out the Open Air Collective. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with their site, they do some really great stuff in a diverse area of, of, uh, of 
fields, uh, the cyan unit, uh, that's my work down there. Uh, that's a different, uh, 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 a next generation model. Um, I had a very simple model to begin with. Um, and um, some other work that they've done, the Violet project, which is uh, still getting built, they've done some excellent uh, open hardware work um, um, on that. And then that in, in turn, leads to being able to do um, um, carbon removal actions, policy changes. Um, so you have a whole network of, of effects from like a single cause. And that's very rarely possible in any other field where you're just kind of in this information silo and all of your work kind of gets um, in an echo chamber to the same people. But in this area, uh, within open hardware, your work actually reaches a much broader network. Um, so open, open air, um, this is an example of, uh, of open source hardware in academia, actually, because uh, you have people such as Matt Parker at NYU, um, which I would love to meet uh, sometime while I'm here because he actually teaches at this university. Um, and he has been um, doing some immense work this past year, um, organizing the 2023 Open Air Carbon Removal Challenge, um, which has invited 28 colleges and universities across the world um, to be able to uh, uh, participate. And um, they get to go through the, uh, the process of designing and developing an open hardware system that meets a very important need. Um, not unlike the needs of um, you know people who are not getting the resources they need um, in in Africa or in other places, um, here we also have a need of carbon to be removed from the air um, just to keep our planet stable and um, and you know that's a need that we all share. Um, but there's differences in priorities and um, and based on just you know, learning experiences that people have had um, that cause them to value some things more than others. So um, just wanted to point this out that this is an example of open source hardware in academia right now. Uh, that's already passed actually. And um, has, I was supposed to have been a judge there, but I was too busy this year, uh, unfortunately. So um, in the past, I've been judge, um, mentor and such for, for many, many students. Um, where that has gone, you can see the Cyan project here. Um, that, you know, there's been a lot of interest um, from, these are all links that if you go to uh, the side deck, you'll be able to like click on all of these and, and see what these are about. I'll just skip all this because it's on Open Air's website, but um, you know, we basically, I thought my paper was really great that I had with my uh, um, uh, um, department. Uh, well, Kwaku and uh, my um, advisor, Dr. Simsky. Um, but um, here, Ross Kenyon did one uh, podcast of me and uh, it got like 7,800 views in that one year. So um, I had 4,000 uh, um, people like visit um, the page for my paper or so, um, but this was pretty nice uh, just to see like there's different ways of reaching people um, that um, should all be taken advantage of. Um, but, um, but yeah, the Cyan Project, we had a student, Kat Sale, who's gone on to do some great things in cement work um, just because of, you know, probably some of what we did contributed. Um, and she, she's a great person, very knowledgeable, and, you know, definitely want to honor her work as well. Um, but you can see all of this, all of these different icons are programs having actual impact today, um, getting things changed around to, uh, to improve how carbon is removed. Uh, these are all like stemming from open hardware work. So um, pretty cool. I of course have to give a shout out to my advisor. Uh, I mentioned his name before, Dr. Simsky. Uh, he's a professor of systems engineering at CSU. And he is one of the people that I admire the most for his excellence uh, in teaching and his commitment to students. Uh, he has about 50 students at uh, CSU um, now. He has 50 students, uh, graduate students, because um, systems engineering is the largest degree program and most of the students are remote. Uh, they're distance students like myself. So um, he inspires excellence wherever he goes. It's like a a carpet of excellence that just gets rolled out behind him and, and he walks in front and just, you know, all the students are able to um, to do, to, to follow in great footsteps. So um, 
huge amount of citations and I've only contributed one citation so or one uh, paper so far to this um, due to all the other work I've done this last year so um, so I'm, I'm overdue to get my papers published. Um, why I've been so late? I'm going to go there real, yeah, I'm going to go through all this really fast. Okay. Yeah. I, I obviously I did not practice beforehand. Um, but you know, thought leadership, my bright idea. Uh, this is why the past year I've not actually, you know, had a lot of academic progress. Um, because I thought that, you know, there's an important problem I wanted to solve, but it actually ended up teaching me a lot more about, uh, sustainability and how systems engineering and open hardware can work together. Um, I'm just going to go past this real quick, just acknowledging my team um, who, you know, I, through systems engineering, I should have known about the stuff on the right, which I did kind of know about, known unknowns, unknown unknowns, um, things that could happen, like raining this morning on my way over here, such that I had to walk in the rain for 15 minutes, but, um, you know, that's what happens, and so you got to be prepared for those things and adapt, um, and the delays everywhere. Uh, experience during COVID. Um, that that was something that I incorporated into my thinking. Um, so y'all know about the challenges. I'm going to skip past this. Um, basically, our approach is to solve a plumbing problem. Um, and we did so um, 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 kind of, you know, through uh, a combination of systems engineering and, and um, open hardware, where to deploy open hardware. Um, so solving this global pro um, problem uh, optimizing where the pipe should go, um, then implementing that. Um, this company, uh, this is now about like what we've been doing um, with the work that um, in, in total um, in the past. Um, don't do that at the bottom. That's like really bad for uh, for uh, your fundraising. So you got to keep it simple and, uh, and understandable, which is why documentation is so important. So um, um, let's skip that one as well because um, – this is why really we need to bust silos because, um, you know, if he said it, uh, it's got to be right, right? I mean, it's, it's, um, he had some great ideas, Albert Einstein. So, um, yeah, and he, there's all these, like, basically, if, if time and space um, cannot be found to merge together, um, like the most basic stuff, um, then we know that, you know, all the information silos that we have um, kind of need a little bit of uh, breaking down as well. Um, this is what um, kind of where everything relates that I've uh, experienced so far the past few years. Open air has kind of uh, um, been up in that sphere. Um, systems engineering was down here. And uh, so I kind of, you know, try to take advantage of, um, you know, great people, great minds that I had around me to uh, make a little company, which is really small right now. Um, and part of that, um, just showing you how great uh, CSU is in things, um, it's an academic leader in sustainability. So if any place, I'm going to learn about the problem just by being at CSU uh, that we're trying to solve. Uh, it's like, it's really a really forward thinking place and does incredible research like finding out that if you actually use an electric scooter or e-bike um, you're doing more to save the planet than uh, even like motorcycles or like bicycles it's it's pretty cool um model based systems engineering yeah i know i'm gonna run over a little bit but i i will stop myself because i actually um three minutes two minutes i'm it yeah, yeah, it's going to be rough, yeah. But, you know, just to say, yeah, I, I'm going to get to the very end. Y'all can look at this, and it's going to be up on YouTube, and, uh, um, you know, um, um, and I, you can ask me questions on Discord. But uh, let me just get to the cool stuff. Just want to highlight uh, the work that uh, has been done on the Global Village construction set actually shows um, how model-based systems engineering is applied to sustainability already. So you just unite that with open hardware, which they've already done. I was going to show that, that, you know, this is uh, basically the symbols for model-based systems and engineering and what they've developed uh, as open source technology pattern language, which can go on to um, build more things like, um, you know, circuits of all kinds, nodes and edges, basically networks, um, which then can develop into uh, 
representations of larger networks. You know, we've got the standard model, periodic table, everything, circuit schematics. That's how everything is kind of united. Um, everything's kind of uh, networked together. So, and I'm going to go through these real fast because I want to get to the very end. And I know I had too many slides, um, but I was like, cramming them in at the last moment. Um, yeah, that, definitely skipping that one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, solutions from systems engineering and open hardware. Uh, looks like I have to stop. So you guys can't hear the rest. So, you know, I got all of these left. But, um, but yeah, it, it's going to get good. Yeah, way too much. See, I just went wild last night. So, um, yeah, you, you can get there. My thanks to everyone that had to stop there. So, and uh, especially to my new Prakash uh, S and Ginger. Um, you can all look at this later. Yep, the last slide at last. So, um, okay, thank you, everyone.